girls, the boys, superstar DJs. Here, Here we, we go. go! It's getting fucking hot. Right. <laughs> Where were we? Heat cycling. I fucking love this. So I'll read that again. Important note: many readers have emailed to ask about the cool down and if it means heat cycling the engine. No, this is his answer. No, the above cool down in instructions only apply if you are using a dyno machine a machine to break in your engine the reason for cool down on a dyno has nothing to do with heat cycles here it comes are you ready what about heat cycling the engine question mark is what someone's asked him there is no need to heat cycle a new engine we'll we'll get to that <laughs> This 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 is the the jewel. This is the this is the, the the that bitter taste of bollocks in your mouth. The term heat cycle comes from the idea that new engine components are being heat treated as the engine is run. Heat treating the metal parts is a very different process, and it's already done at the factory before the engines are assembled. The temperature required to heat treat uh, for heat treating are much higher than the engine will ever reach during operation. The idea that breaking the engine in using heat cycles is a myth that came from the misunderstanding of the concept from heat treating. This could be true. People could think that heat cycling is the same as heat treating, which, as he says, is not true. The fact that there is no need to heat cycle an engine is the bollocks bit. So, I don't know if he's saying that heat cycling is a myth, but with a hard running, or his hard running, he is doing heat cycling, he's letting the engine cool down, he's not doing it enough, that's why they say after a thousand miles, because who the fuck is doing a thousand miles non-stop in one go? Obviously you have to stop and refuel, you know what I mean? So, um, heat cycling, if, he's, if he thinks it's an actual myth, this is a paper that was published in uh, an American Journal of Material and ma uh, Materials and... Uh, a Journal of Minerals and Material Characterization and Engineering. This was published in 2011. Um, this was volume number 10. I'll put a link in the description um, for this paper. This is the thermal cycling effects on the fatigue behavior of low carbon steel. And this goes in to... Um, but thermal cycling is the alternate healing and cooling of a material. You have two types, low frequency thermal cycling Blah blah blah, and high cycle, uh, heat frequency thermal cycling. It goes on. I will do a video just about this. There we go. So, high frequency thermal cycling is the one in which the time involved is in milliseconds and the heating and cooling is influenced by the thermal inertia of a system under consideration. It then goes on to say cylinder heads, piston rings, and exhaust manifolds are standing examples of components which experience high frequency thermal cycling. So even in this paper, which goes on with, you know, it's got all the equations and the experiment and they talk about, you know, all these numbers and all this, two cycles, ten cycles, blah 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 blah. And then in the conclusion, we'll go through all this properly a bit more so we can talk about thermal cycling, but the conclusion states Machines that would be used in service operation should have thermally cycled at high temperatures and high cycles um, before product is released to be able to predict the life and behaviour of the machine. This has acknowledgements with material and metallurgy, engineering laboratory, labor laboratory, blah, 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 blah. You know, it goes on and on and on, does this paper, about thermal cycling, but thermal cycling is not a myth and it is something that your engine has to go through. At the end of this, I'll talk about exactly why. Um... Oh no, actually, no, I'll do another video about thermal cycling. But yeah, but... Um, no, someone else writes another comment to me saying, Yeah, but the owner's manual says you need to break it in easy. Right, let's just stop there for a second, because this is pissing me off. Right? And this is all to do about testicles. Is all this. Right? It's like this. We have the, the manufacturer's... We have their braking, we have hard braking, and because it's hard and people think they're awesome, then this is automatically soft. No, soft would go here, right? Soft brakings are probably not nearly as bad as hard, but bad, 
you know what I mean? So this is in the middle, it's not as soft. You don't just have soft hard, you have the manufacturers, you can go soft, you can baby the shit out of your engine, which will make your rings not seat properly. And that's pretty much about it. And basically you get glazing, polishing and all of other kinds of little issues, which aren't catastrophically bad. It just means you get used to reduction of power and you get a bit of blow by and blah blah blah. We'll go into that later. Soft, manufacturers and hard. Manufacturers say this, these dickheads are saying this, but they like to call this the soft. It's not soft. What's soft about it? It's saying opening up to, you know, don't go above 75% of the throttle. Don't go into that 25% window. It's not saying, don't, just don't go over, don't go over quarter throttle. It's not saying, how is it soft? When it's saying 50% and, and then 100% throttle. You're on the fucking road. Why would you need to anyway? This is the thing you don't need to straight away. Um... Yeah, so, notice that this technique isn't beating on the engine, but rather making... Yeah, he's on about his fucking hard braking again. Uh, notice that this technique isn't beating on the engine, but rather taking a purposeful, uh, methodical approach to sealing the rings. The logic of this method is sound. It is beating on the engine. What the fucking hell would be beating on the engine? Going to full throttle would be beating on the engine, which is what he tells you to do. Short cycles and just going uh, 50%, 75 100% in the space of half an hour, an hour, max. You know what I mean? Oh, maybe two hours, let's just say. Uh, however, some will have a hard time with this approach, since it seems to go against the grain. Yeah, yeah, it goes against what the people who... Man, you've got to understand this. These guys have... Uh, and I'm talking about the manufacturers. These guys have taken raw materials out of the earth, rocks basically, and they've smelted them down and they've processed them and blah blah blah. Don't get me wrong, it's not Yamaha digging rocks out of the fucking ground or anything. But they take the materials, raw materials, and they fashion them and mould them with all sorts of manufacturing techniques and then they produce an engine. And you get on top of it. And this basically, the, these metallic components that were once an ore not that long ago or recycled from fucking beer cans is whizzing you around at 150 mile an hour. These guys who made that magic happen from nothing to something that does a purpose are telling you don't do this because it's detrimental to your engine. Oh no, I'll just fucking ignore them. You know what I mean? It. Anyway, it goes on. Um, what is the most cause of engine problems? He said, failure to warm up the engine completely before running it hard. So he's basically saying, what is the most common cause of engine problems, is what someone asked. And he said, warming up the engine completely before running it hard. So he's basically admitting, in a sense, that running it hard will cause the engine to have problems. Uh, what is the second most cause of engine problem? An easy engine braking. Evidence, please, for fuck's sake. Because, and it goes on, because when the rings don't seal well, the blow-by gases contaminate the oil with acids and other harmful combustion processes. <laughs> or products, should I say. So, what are these acids, right? Now, don't get me wrong, when you get carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide and nitrogen oxides and actual, you know, um, some of the other things that are in um, petrol, benzene, fluorobenzene, fucking xylene and all these other things, sometimes they can dissolve in oil and they do turn quite acidic. But when was the last time you opened an engine that had done 150,000 miles and you could see chemical acid corrosion? I don't know anyone who's done that. I'll tell you what you do see if you have aluminium parts and methanol. If you run an ethanol engine and you let it stand in anything aluminium, then you'll see a chemical corrosion. It's not an acidic one, but you will see a chemical corrosion. And it's pretty fucking obvious. There are not guys out there going, fucking hell, my pistons have dissolved because acid got out of them. He's just talking fucking rubbish. Number two is, glass gas blow-by is usually down to wear. This is the thing. It, yes, if you glaze your rings, you are going to get a slight bit more gas blow-by, but there's always some. There's always some because your rings aren't perfectly sealed. And the rings uh, aren't perfectly sealed because you've got a fucking ring gap in the end. Hence why we have more than one ring, generally speaking. Um, the other, like I say, these acids that are dissolving... You've got to remember, petroleum, petrol, gasoline, comes from oil, crude oil, and that's where you get your mineral oils from. It's the same kind of 
thing, you know, it's like mixing, you know, it's like mixing, I don't know, fucking acetone with petrol or xylene. It doesn't really do much because they're hydrocarbons, they're all part of the same family. Fucking hell fire. You know what I mean? Carbon is probably one of the worst things that can... And the thing is, you've got to remember as well is that you... Uh, yeah, I'm just... Uh, forget it, forget it. It's going to fucking annoy me. Oh, let's move on. The reason is that brand new rings don't seat all the way around the 360 degrees of their circumference. Now, if you men mentioned the ring gap, I could get what he's on about here, but he's not talking about that. The gas pressure from hard acceleration forces the rings to contact the cylinder around their entire circumference. Hard acceleration. Uh, it's got nothing to do with it. Hard acceleration just means that the piston rings basically just move, uh, uh, you know, per second or in more, you know, run up and down so there is greater heat generated. And again, that is a problem, you see. If you accelerate an engine that's not properly oiled, you know what I mean, or isn't running properly, what happens is, is that there's excessive heat from all this friction because the rings haven't worn in properly. Which is the only way the rings can wear properly into the shape of the cylinder to seal the combustion pressure. <sighs> you don't break in an engine by having it on takeover. That's quite simple. It does need some acceleration. That's why they tell you to get on the bike and ride it. Just don't ride the fucking shit out of it. Uh, once the roughness of the cylinder is gone, the rings stop wearing into the cylinder. I swear to God, I'm going to put... Well, all of these are on the fucking screen from the actual website. The roughness of the cylinder is gone, the rings stop wearing into the cylinder. So there is no ever need to replace rings ever again because they just don't wear. You are a complete fucking muppet. Now, we're getting on to some really juicy bits here. Recent snowmobile info. Yamaha braking recommendations for the RX-1 have been to idle the engine for 15 minutes. Yamaha's braking recommendations for the RX-1 have been to idle the engine for 15 minutes. Some owners found that the heat build-up from doing this was so extreme that their tail lights had begun to melt. Yamaha then since changed the recommendation to three five-minute idle periods. Why would Yamaha recommend a braking method which will prevent the rings from sealing as well as possible? Because it was melting the rear tail light and people were complaining. That's why it's meant to be moving. You know what I mean? It gets its cooling from moving through the fucking atmosphere, you pillock. It's... Why did they change it? Because it's idling and it's melting brake lights. He's just said it himself. So, then he goes on, then he goes on. He shows you um, these Honda F3 pistons show the difference. So there's a picture that goes with it here, and I'll put it up on the screen. All these pistons came out of engines which were raced for a full season. So we're talking about racing here, which is different. They weren't set up with any special clearances or other preparations. Well, I doubt that because they're racing pistons if they're used for racing. If they're not and you're just racing a road bike, then you are going to see different characteristics. Then you are going to see for a road bike that the manufacturer tells you to brake in for a road bike for road use. These engines were never worked on, on, worked on prior to being raced and they were totally stock and built by, Yam uh, by Honda. These engines were not worked on prior to being raced. Were these brand new? This is a good question. The only difference was the braking method they used. So obviously they were brand new by what he's saying. The one on the right was broken in via motorman's instructions. The one, was the one on the left was broken in according to the manufacturer's manual. The resulting leaky rings has allowed piston the resulting leaky rings has allowed pressure to blow by down into the crankcase on acceleration and oil to suck up into the combustion chamber on deacceleration. Well, I don't know about anybody else, but them pistons, the one on the right looks fucking brand new to me. And that's meant to be his point, is that, well, no, that's the whole point, my braking procedure works. But to me, that looks fucking brand new. Um, because there's no carbon on the crown and... The hard braking or not is not going to stop carbon being deposited on the crown, so I smell bullshit. Needless to say, this bike was slow. Data, mate. Data. You can't just say it. The loss in power from... Are you ready? This is fucking genius. The loss in power from an easy braking 
and resulting poor ring, uh, ring seal can be anywhere from two, which I, if you had, uh, it's not the engine braking, if you do a soft girly, let's do it with idle for 10 minutes, from two to 10% power reduction. Fuck off. Even if you have shitty sealed rings, you are not going to lose 10% power. Are you fucking mental? God's sake. There are four, so and then he has another picture. Well, pictures. Here are 14 pistons from 14 different bikes, which is not a good comparison. Um, and from the look of them, I don't think they're from different bikes. They all look like the same piston, pretty much, from what I can see. Oh no, there are differences. Yeah, there are different pistons there. But uh, quite a lot of them look like different pistons. I wouldn't say they're, I'd say they're four pistons from four cylinders. Um, or two cylinders or whatever. Anyway. With several manufacturers re represented. Some are from street bikes and some are from race bikes. So that's not a good comparison, but anyway, let's go with it. All of the engines had the correct jetting and the reasons... Some have black carbon deposits because they were running pump gas, which burns dark regardless of jetting. Now I wonder if that's the two comparisons they had at the top with the one with... Um, dark carbon on one and one on the other. Were, were they run on different fuels because he said that they were run... Prior to, yeah, anyway, it doesn't make any sense. Whereas the lighter ones will run on oxygenated race fuel, which gives a lighter tan or grey colour. Many of the black carbon pistons were from race bikes. Uh, as in any museum, some of the specimens are better examples than others. Talk about the museum. But the point is that none have any leak past the top ring because they were all broken in by the described method, uh, by the method described below. Well, that looks like wing burn. I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. This piston, ah, oh, that's the one. This piston is from a 650 Honda Hawk. The brown discoloration that extends up the piston ping ball is burnt oil from extreme heat leaking past all three rings. What? The whole fucking piston gets hot. You can actually even see on the side of this picture that there's some fucking piston slap going on. On the side skirt. The guy's a fucking moron. The piston is totally cool from, you know, from what he's saying. It's all about the rings. <laughs> Fucking idiot. The uneven heat leakage was so bad that it caused the cylinder to distort and become out of round. Oval pistons. Piston slap. Nothing to do with ring seating. This is running an engine cold. You fucking muck it. Causing pistons to cylinder scuffing in the tight part of the oval cylinder. That makes no sense. Let me read that again, because that makes no sense. The uneven heat leakage, heat leakage, heat transfer, no bad, was so bad that it caused the cylinder to distort and become out of round, because piston to cylinder scuffing in the tight part of the oval cylinder. Again, it makes no sense, even if I read it fucking backwards. Three more words on braking. No synthetic oil, this is fucking brilliant. Use Volvoline, uh, Holvoline, or similar, 40 weight, at 10 weight 40 petroleum car oil for at least two days for at least full two full days of hard racing or 1500 miles of street riding driving street riding driving what about bikes you muppet not driving number two is don't use car oil fuck's sake and use 40 use 1040 depends where you fucking live you see this is bad 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 info after, the, after that, use your favourite brand of oil. Even though it's shit, you could have shit oil, but it's your favourite because it's cheap. That's not good advice. Questions and, questions and answers, best bit. This is the fucking best bit. My motorcycle comes with syn synthetic oil from the factory. What should I do? I recommend changing the factory installed synthetic oil back to petroleum for the braking period. Again. Yamaha, Honda, Suzuki, Kawasaki, KTM. Everybody are all fucking wrong because this guy has pistons. Loads of pistons. I bet he doesn't know how the manufacturer though, that's the funniest thing. Uh, what about the main rods and bearings? Do they need breaking in? Actually, the operation of frame... This is fucking amazing. Woo! Actually, the operation of the plane bearings does not, doesn't involve metal-to-metal -metal contact. Well, it does, that's how you wear your bearings out. It shouldn't, and you should have an oil film. 
The shiny spots on used bearings are caused from their contact with the crank journals during startup after the engine has been sitting for a while. Not a while, pretty much straight away. The, the crankshaft drops as soon as the oil pressure drops and the excess oil is drained off. Yeah, he's right, we'll go with that. This is the main reason for not revving up the engine when you first start. Very true. Fucking hell, not an idiot. But then comes the best bit. The subject of plain bearings is one of the most mysterious aspects of engines. <laughs> I can't... Uh, I can't carry on with this. This is. I'm glad this is the end. This is literally the end. Uh, and will be covered in a future episode of Power News. I will find that article because obviously we are going to hear about the mysteries of plain bearings. In it, I reveal more information on why fully explain, and that fully explains the non-contact phenomenon. Pho I can't say phenomenon. I can't say it. phenomenon. Phenomenon. You see, that's even funnier than what I said. He reveal this 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 weird, mysterious. Please, wizard, teachers. Finally, this is the best bit ever. By following the instructions on this page, you'll find that your oil is cleaner and your engine will rev, rev quicker. Plus, you'll have a much better torque and power curve across the power range from vastly improved ring sealing. Oh, no. No. So, I've got an idea. Um, I might be going to uh, Japan in the next uh, five months with work and I am going to try and book my holiday at the same time. So they'll fly me out to Japan for a week and a half, and then at the end of that week and a half, I will have my week's holiday and stay in Japan. And I'm trying to arrange to have um, an interview with an engineer from Honda, Kawasaki, uh, Yamaha, and Suzuki. I'm going to try and go to these places around Japan and actually talk to these guys, and we're going to see what the Japanese engineers have to say. The fact of the matter is, as you can see, a lot of this is rubbish. It's just fucking junk. So, after the, this is a really long fucking video, I understand that. If you got to the end, well done. Um, I'm going to talk about the next video about heat cycling and actually why and how um, hard braking can actually damage your engine. Hope that all makes sense, and I'll see you in a bit.